Dear colleagues, I'm Christoph Diener, a neurologist from the University of Duisburg Essen in Germany, and this month I would like to uh, deal with uh, four new publications on stroke. Let me start with the acute treatment of stroke. There is a new way <coughs> to get uh, patients into hospitals, and these are mobile stroke units. So these are ambulances which are equipped with a CT scan and a small lab and a stroke physician. <clears throat> and in this way, the time to get a patient to thrombolysis is shortened. Now, in Lancet Neurology, there was a study from Berlin, and Berlin has 3.5 million inhabitants and has three of these mobile stroke units. And they compared the outcome of patients with acute ischemic stroke in patients who were treated with this mobile stroke unit or patients where a normal ambulance would get the patient to the hospital. So each of the two groups had about 750 patients. They were well matched in terms of severity of stroke. But what they could show that the mobile stroke units uh, significantly improves outcome after three months measured by modified ranking scale. The time to thrombolysis was reduced by 30 minutes. There, it's not a surprise that the rate of thrombectomy was the same because how a patient gets to the hospital is independent uh, for thrombectomy. Whether this expensive way to get patients earlier to a hospital is really cost effective is unknown at the moment. Another important issue is how can you identify patients with occlusions of the large intracranial arteries which would be, who would be candidates for thrombectomy? In a study in the Netherlands tested eight different stroke scales to see how these patients could be best identified. The gold standard was the face-arm speech test. And the study was done with paramedics and they used one of these scales on their app and then the, the outcome, the predictive outcome, was compared with the uh, NIH SS score at admission in the hospital. It turned out that all of these scales are very good. Now, the unresolved issue is if someone has indications of a large artery occlusion, whether this patient should go directly to a center which provides thrombectomy around the clock or whether a patient should first go to a local stroke unit, get CTA, and then be transported. And this is investigated at the moment in a randomized trial in Spain. Another important issue is the risk of stroke in people with asymptomatic carotid stenosis. And we had conflicting data on this, in particular whether the degree of stenosis is relevant. And the Oxford group so, uh, used data from the Oxford Vascular Study, and in addition, they performed a meta-analysis of all the available data on the five-year ipsilateral stroke risk in people with asymptomatic carotid stenosis. And they clearly observed that people who have a 70 to 99 percent stenosis of the internal carotid artery have a significantly higher risk of ipsilateral stroke than stenosis between 50 and 69 percent. The odds ratio is 2.1. And this, they found a, a significant uh, a heterogeneity between the randomized trials, and they used the medical treatment group and observational data. And this would indicate that perhaps people who have high degree asymptomatic carotid stenosis would have a benefit from uh, uh, carotid surgery or stenting. And finally, the European Stroke Organization published new guidelines on thrombolysis in people with acute ischemic stroke. And they strongly recommend IV thrombolysis 0 0.9 milligrams per kilogram with alteblase within four and a half hours and within four and a half and nine hours in people where CT or MRI perfusion shows a mismatch. They would not recommend uh, uh, people they would not recommend any antithrombotic treatment within 24 hours after thrombolysis. They also promote thrombolysis in patients above 80 years, frail patients, patients with large strokes on imaging, patients with disabling strokes, improving stroke symptoms but still disabling stroke, 
people with high blood pressure, people with high blood glucose, people with diabetes, and people on dual antiplatelet therapy. They recommend also the Bigatran in people who have a stroke, uh, sorry, Idarisuzumab in people who have a stroke on the Bigatran, but they do not recommend the use on the Dexanet Alpha in people who are on a 10A inhibitor. If someone is on a vitamin K antagonist, then thrombolysis can be performed if the INR is below 1.7. Now, they would not recommend uh, uh, thrombolysis in people with minor stroke, with clearly high blood pressure, which has to be lowered first, in people who have very many known microbleeds, and if a patient had an acute coronary syndrome within the last seven days. And there are still more details in this very important guideline on the use of thrombolysis in people with acute ischemic stroke. Dear colleagues, we have interesting new data, both on asymptomatic arytenosis, on preclinical stroke scales, on mobile stroke units. I'm Christoph Diener from the University of Duisburg-Essen in Germany. Thank you very much for watching and listening.